Listen. Teach it. I suppose they the word breaking. Don't break a horse's spirit. Because then it is broken. Let it have its own personality. Let it have its own soul. Develop it. Work with it. Don't ever show it anger. Break away, love. Raising Brody's done. Good boy. This fool's going to be born here, and the father's over in the next stall. He's over in the next stall over there, so both basically more and far are present, which is a rarity, you know. But hopefully, you now in the next weekend, you'll see a wee fool on the ground. As you can tell, she's a good mower, like a good brood mare, like, you know. I left Ireland and headed to the U.S. when I was 19. I had always a habit when it got really cold. In the winter in Chicago, instead of resorting to the bottle, I would head down to Florida or California where it was warmer and continue with my trade as, as a builder, you know. I met Anne in Florida and basically, I mean, I thought she was the last word, you know, she was a beautiful woman and a lot of things that she liked, I liked, and I just basically fell in love with her. And uh, went on to marry her, one of uh, four lovely children, you know, and, you know, she stood by me through thick and thin and taught me a lot about life and about animals and about caring for people and what was important in life. And uh, a great individual, hey, and a woman who searched very hard in her soul for the Lord. That night, basically, I was helping a friend out up the town, doing the door. And I came home at one o'clock and there she was lying in the bathroom. Uh, I thought she'd just passed out, but she had actually died, you know. And actually, I didn't even notice her, I was uh, cleaning my teeth. And I looked down, and there she was, like, and uh, she was dead. Like, it was a big ask to go up and tell the girls. The wee boys didn't even understand, like, you know. I left her that night, and she gave me my dinner at 9.15, and she winked at me when I went out of the room, smiled at me, and she says, be a good boy, like, <laughs> you know. that's the bit that ensures me that that soul just didn't go. The body might have gave up, but there was a great soul there, like, you know, and it passed on. Initially, this land was bought when Anne was alive, and it was bought to uh, have a few horses on, and then shortly after, Han died, and I kept it going, and a lot of the driving power, you know, that it kept going was for her. On the third year anniversary of uh, Anne's death, I was in the graveyard, and it was a rainy, rainy day. And I asked the God and Jesus for help, and. That night I was on the internet, I seen a couple of foals for sale and I bought one for Mikey and Marky and I met a girl through it called Claire, who I'm with now, and uh, a great woman too. good happiness and a great family, a family at that stage was nine. 
we had headed away to Mullock Moor and Caitlin was there with her boyfriend. And uh, she had been complaining about pains in her stomach, you know. I listened. She had been riding horses that day down the beach and I thought it was just too much pizza and fizzy drinks. And basically when she comes back she looked terrible and we took her to the hospital and after a lot of beating about the bush for a few weeks, you know, and Caitlin had developed cancer and died a couple of weeks after, 19 years of age, you know, beautiful girl. Caitlin was the one who looked most like her mummy in looks and actions and everything. I, I always said <laughs> that Anne was never, never really died when Caitlin was around the house. Unlike the mother's death, it wasn't so sudden, like, and there was a lot of talking was done. And at her bedside, I says, how have I done as a father? And she says, you know what, Daddy? You were right when I was wrong. Caitlin's demise was was very spiritual in a way, like you know. And I remember one night then, Caitlin was in a lot of pain, and I went outside and I looked up at the sky. It was a sort of a starry night, and October time. And I was just did the Lord listen, the miracle that I for a quest it. Take that care out of her pain now. I remember going in and my sister-in-law, Lucia, great woman. And Claire, another fine woman. You couldn't have been with two better women. And I said to two of them, listen, this has been my last trip through the doors and the two girls were looking at me, as what they say. Like, what are you on about, man? At this stage, Caitlin's cancer was so bad, like, and she was on the morphine, and... And I said to her, listen, give it up. The first time I ever said to her, go back to your mommy, give it up, and she squeezed me hand and died. Basically, it took about 11 minutes, you know. I think she was holding on for me. They accept, you know, to get right with. I would find physical pain is a lot easier a dose than emotional pain, you know. Like physical pain will always go away. 
you know, the bone will mend or the hurt will heal. Emotional pain tends to leave more scars. An old man once said to me, from the outside of a horse will take a lot of pain out of the inside of a man. As life has went on for me, I've learned to understand exactly what he meant. Canter! Canter! And trot. 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 Good boy, trot. Walk. Good boy, walk. My father just passed away. Believe it or not, do anything enough times, like fall off a horse enough times, push weights enough times, you get used to the pain of it. As harsh as it might sound, but you do harden the grief. He had a good life. Last night as I lay dreaming of pleasant days gone by. I was blessed with a wee granddaughter there, wee nana, I call her Neve. She filled a big hole in my heart. <laughs> it's good they laugh, eh? I mean, they laugh as... They have the crack and laugh is on, real. It's uh, life of the soul, like, really. You know, a joyous soul. The old ones were all dead and gone, and the young ones turn and grey. I believe we don't die, I believe we pass on because there's a strong soul there. He's as bold as ever still. The only one thing you come into the world with is your soul. And the only thing you leave with is your soul. When I lived in Spansil Hill. During your time of life, it's your duty to make sure that you keep that soul intact. My first and only love. So, just take your handy and be happy for every breath you take, because every breath you take basically is a, a miracle. Well, I dreamt I hugged and kissed on her like in the days of your. She says, Johnny, you're only joking like many a time before. The cock, he crew in the morning, he crew both loud and shrill, and I awoke.